Be glorified in this place. We bow down. 
give way to your awesome power.
Holy Spirit. Yes. Why don't you come on down to the altar? Come, 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 come. Thank come, you, God. Come, somebody been struggling. I don't know who you are. God says somebody been struggling this week. Come, come, come. come. It's been a bigger struggle this week than you've ever had before. And this struggle is trying to take you out, trying to cause you to lose your mind. You're starting to question yourself and the God you love. I'm not here to alter to be seen. I'm here to alter to get in His presence. It's been a fight. It's been an attack on my mind. It's been an attack on my spiritual body. But Jesus said, if He be lifted up, He draw me. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, in Jesus' name. The hand I'm holding has been hurt, it's been abused. It's struggling. But I declare in the name of Jesus, they're in a fixed fight. Because you fixed it on Calvary. And so now in Jesus' name, I decree and declare that they have the power of the Holy Ghost to endure the pressure. Because if we didn't have pressure in our life, we wouldn't know how awesome you were. These trials only come to make us strong. It's only a setup. Thank you for the pain. Thank you for the tears. Thank you for the disappointment. Thank you for not understanding. Thank you for not knowing. But in all that we've gone through, we know that you are healer. You are waymaker. You are deliverer. You are bridge over trouble walls. You are very present now in the time of trouble. And we're in trouble. But you are trouble. You can fix it. My children, you can fix it. On the job, you can fix it. In my home, you can fix it. In my body, you can fix it. I give it to you. The worship atmosphere is fixed. So you can fix it. Fix me.
In Jesus' name. In Je I need you to talk with me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name.
Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. They shall rise up the former desolutions. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolutions of many generations. The strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for your confession they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her blood, and as the garden causeth the things that are so many to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Victory in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Release that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tell you, this is our year of faith. We're in the eighth month and I'm still holding on to it. A lot of times when you come to church, you have to realize that you sometimes you have to step in with spiritual warfare, even in the church. So you got to be ready to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah.
by night and saying, Master, teacher, we know that thou art a man come from God because nobody can do these things that you're doing except God be with him. Jesus tells Nicodemus, he tells him, he says, answers him and says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Y'all will be seated. I'm already done. I'm going to hang on right there. You, you, you can be in church. That's right. You can serve on ministries. You can be a part of, 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 of different uh, uh, avenues within the church body and still not know Christ. You're just busy being busy and you don't have the master as the Lord of your life. The Bible says that Nicodemus was a ruler. Nicodemus' name means conqueror of people. He was in charge of people, but didn't have Christ in charge of him. You got to know Jesus as Lord of your life. A lot of people confess him as Savior, but they don't confess him as Lord. Because when he's Lord, he rules my everything. You, you got to be willing to give God everything that belongs to him. You got to give him your life. You got to give him your finances. You got to give him your children. You got to give him your dreams. You got to give him your aspirations. You got to give him your hope. You've got to give him your desires. Everything that you think you are, you're really nothing until you have given it over to the master. Jesus declares that unless a man, if you want to be his disciple, you're going to have to leave mother, father, sister, brother, houses, and land. You've got to give up. You've got to not do what other people want you to do so much as what I want you to do. You've got to be willing to follow Jesus. Everybody that's with you is not necessarily with you. You've got to know that Jesus is the only one that is able to help you when you're going through. God so fixes it so many times that we think people are with us and God will take those very people who we're trusting in right from under you or cause them to disappoint you so you can see he's all you really need in the first place. I appreciate you. Don't take it for granted. But all I really need is Jesus. Because if I got Jesus, I got more than I can't get no help in here. If I got Jesus, I got everything I need. Nicodemus is in church. A ruler of the Jews. Running church, running business. Know what it means to offer the sacrifice. Know what it means. But he comes to Jesus in the nighttime because he didn't want to be seen. Uh -huh. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before me, and I'll be ashamed of all you before my father, you ought to be just as saved on Sunday as you are on Wednesday. You ought not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is that gospel that gives us power. I can't get no opinion. It is that gospel that gives us strength. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ who really lets me know who I really am. Because it doesn't matter what you think about me, but it does matter what the word of God has already declared in my life. That's why I picked up him this morning. I am what God says I am. I'm healed because God says I'm healed. I'm blessed because God says I'm blessed. I am what God says I am because a lot of us start worrying about what other people and so we did, then we are wrapped into or locked into what other people say we are. But God has already declared that when we accept Him, that we are heirs and joint heirs of the Father and of the Son. Nicodemus wanted to come to Jesus and He came to Him by night. Nicodemus says, Watch this, I love this. Nicodemus says, We know. Nicodemus 
says, we know. And you got to understand this because, see, Brother Don, church folk hang out with church folk. And church folk started having a conversation about a man that they had a question about. And they really, at the end, wanted to kill Jesus and did kill him. But see, even you got to understand, he says, we know that thou art a teacher that have come from God. So they're saying that we know who you are, but yet still they want to kill you. Some people know who you are, but they still want to kill your dreams. They, they still want to kill your destiny because they don't know who you really are. They assume. Because if you know who I am, I'm not a threat to you. I'm a blessing in your midst. We know that our teacher will come from God because nobody can do the things you do. Nobody. Except God be with you. Look at your neighbor and say, is God with you? <laughs> is God with you? I know you got other folk with you, but you ought to have God with you. Because when God is with you, it don't matter who's against you. When God is with you, it don't matter who's plotting against you. When God is on your side, he'll cause you to mount up on wings. As he, he'll cause you to run and not be weary. He'll put strength in your weakness and cause you to triumph over whatever's trying to block you. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very truly, of the truth he says, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Jesus is simply telling Nicodemus, he's saying, Nick, I know you know about church, and I know you know about the law, and I know you know about the penitent. He says, but you can't even see me. Except you are born again. And he's not talking about physically being born. He's talking about being born of the Holy Spirit. Because it is the word of God that washes us. See that? There is some mess that's in the, on, on the inside of all of us. Now, don't sit here and act like you're all holy. There is some mess that only the word of God can wash. See, a lot of we, 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 we get in the shower, we get in the bathtub, and we wash this and we wash that, and you think you're clean. But I guarantee you that somewhere there's still some dirt. So just because you in church, don't act like you ain't got dirt. We're here to be clean, not here to judge one another. He says, you've got to be born again. You've got to accept me. You, you, you're talking about me. You're singing about me. You're reading about me. You're even jumping and shouting about me. But do you really love me? Because see, who you love, you'll follow. Who you love, you obey. And in order for him to be king and you to be in his kingdom, you've got to follow the king. You've got to be willing to let him rule and reign over your life. How can you say you love him when you won't obey him? How can you say you love him when you're not willing to follow him? He says, take up your cross and follow me. We want to take up the part that we want to take up. But you've got to be willing to give all over to him. It's all or nothing. Tell your name, it's all or nothing. You must be born again. It has nothing to do with giving your hand to the preacher, but it has all to do with giving your heart to God. You've got to be born again. You've got to change your ways. You've got to change your thought pattern. You've got to change your outlook so he can look into your soul and declare you righteous. Yeah. Nicodemus says, unto him, how can this thing be kept? How can a man kill a man? And a second time into his mother, well, what are you talking about? He says, except you be born again. Born of the water and born of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. A lot of folk talking about heaven ain't going. Jesus died so you can get to heaven. Why would you waste God's precious blood 
on foolishness. You got to be, you must be born again. Because when you're born again, you do things different. When you're born again, you treat folk differently. When you're born again, you walk circumspectively in the world. When you're born again, you realize, you know what? I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time for foolishness. I ain't got time for the little mediocre games. You get to a point in your life where foolishness, That's right. you recognize it for what it is. And you understand that the timing of God is so important in my life right now. I don't have time to slip up because That's it. he's on the way. That's it. That's it. I got to be born again. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and in order to be born again, I got to stay born again. That's it. That's the problem. That's it, right? I can't slip dab in and dab out. Yeah. That's I got to be totally committed to God. Why? Because he's totally committed to me. Because if I want to be in the kingdom, and listen, I told you this last week, you got to crucify yourself. You got to constantly die. You got to die. You got to kill you. I can't kill Sister Mella. Sister Mella got to kill herself. That's right. That's right. We be trying to kill our stuff in one another. You need to kill what's in you and allow God to work on what's in me. In me. That's right. He says, you cannot see the kingdom if you're not born again. Born again. If you have not confessed me, I said it before and I said it again. This was so important to me because if Nicodemus is in church, it's a possibility to be in church. So busy being busy that we miss who Jesus really is. We so accustomed to coming to church. That's all we do is come to church. We never experience the God of the church. We're so busy passing messages and notes, we forget the real purpose that we're here. We are here that God can change our lives because the mess I was yesterday, I don't want to take it into tomorrow. The hell I went through last year, this year I want it to be so much better because I'm born again and I'm just not talking, I'm born again. I'm walking this thing out. Even if I have to cry, I'm walking this thing out because God will give me strength to overcome whatever I'm dealing with. Because I'm born again. I can't act the way I want to act. Because I'm born again. I can't speak the way I used to speak. Because I'm born again. I can't do things with these hands I used to do. Because he changed me. If any man be in Christ, he's a... All things have passed away. Behold, look. And when I look, I'll see something different. And behold, behold means look. When I look at you, I ought to see something different in your life because you've been in the presence of the king. Because when worship was going on a few minutes ago, you, we ought to walk out of here and people know you've been in his presence. The sin of the Holy Ghost ought to still be in your clothes, in your face, in your eyes. We ought to know that you've been with the master and the master's been with you. How was church today? Was our, Wonderful. How was church today? All they say, they jumped around, they did a couple of things. What was the message about? I don't know. How was worship? Man? I don't know. Nate was off key, the musician. He was playing another key. Cecil was just all off beat. But see, when you come to get in God's presence, you don't care who on me. When you get in trouble, you don't care what note and play. You don't care what beat brother Cecil is on. Because when you really need to get in God's presence, I don't need an organ. I don't need a soloist. I don't need a drum. I just enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court and pray. I just get in there. Even if y'all don't want to go, I'll go by myself. Because you get in there and get grand. Oh, I'm going to store up some temper. As the old folks say, because I never know when 
He said, Nick, you're in church. And you really don't know me. And the folk you hanging around. Jesus. They despise me. Their only concern about me, Sister Pat, is because I'm drawing attention to myself. And the people that were following y'all and singing y'all praises now have seen the real Messiah. When you're with Jesus, people ought to see the real Christ on the inside. When you've been in his presence, they can recognize being fake and being authentic. He says, you can't see the kingdom. The only way you can see the kingdom is through me because I'm it. That's it. Sure is. I am the kingdom. Yeah. Everything my father has given me, I want to give you. But if you don't accept me, you can't have none of it. You can't see it. And unless you are born of the water and of the spirit, he told the woman at the well, he said, out of your belly is going to flow. Rivers of living water. You think you thirsty? The whole area you want thirst. Come and drink. You ain't got the body of it. Just come and drink. And I will fill you. Some of us are thirsty today. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about regular water. I'm talking about living water. When God fills you, your, 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 your body changes on the inside. There's a change on the inside. The stuff that you used to enjoy and dabble in, your appetite, your attitude, all of that begins to change because God is working on the inside of you. You can't, you can't mix holiness and foolishness together. When the Holy Spirit is yes. on the inside of you, well, yeah. those two cannot coexist right. at the That's same right. time. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I promise you, if you have the Holy Ghost, it's going to override. Because I'm born again. Yes. My relationship is so strong in him. And watch this. I have to keep it at a premium. Mm -hmm. So I can't do church this week and don't do church for another three weeks. Come on. Because I have to stay connected. Right, right right. Right. Yeah. Oh, thank you, mother. I'll run out. Right. Amen. I got to stay charged up because every day I'm having to face different trouble. Moses messed up. 
God told Moses, he said, I need you to speak to the rock. Speak to Before Moses had struck, God told him, strike the rock and water would come out. The children of Israel were in the wilderness and then they were thirsty and they were getting on Moses' nerve. And I'm sure they were black. They were getting on Moses' nerve.
you can't see it. Jesus, read it all. And don't allow folk to make you just see it and not in it. Because you can mess around with folk and you'll just do that, see it. I've cried some nights. I've worried some nights. There's some nights I've doubted myself and wondered was God even listening for me to get at the feet of Jesus. And I tell him I prophesied in your name. I, I, I sang in your name. I spoke in your name. I healed in your name. I gave in your name. And he said, depart from me. I don't even know you. I got to enter in. Because I'm a kingdom citizen. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I've been to Jamaica. I've been to Cancun. I've been to Puerto Rico. I've been to a couple places. But I ain't never been to heaven. Take it up. Get ready. I had to go get a passport to go out of the country. But I don't need a passport to get into heaven. What I do need is to be born again of the water and of the spirit. The Holy Ghost is my passport. And it never expires. I don't have to renew it every 10 years. But all I really have to do is stay connected Thank you. to the key. To the door of the church. That's it. Stay connected.